Hey guys, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm taking a look at a new visual novel game called A Little Lily Princess. This game was released on May 19th, 2016. Trigger price is $16.99 Canadian, probably about $15 US or your regional equivalent. And it is developed by Hanabira Games and published by Hanako Games. Now if you've been following the channel for a while, you might recognize the artwork of the two girls in the picture here. It is the uh, the, the art is done by the same artist who did the art for uh, Soccer Beach and Soccer Beach 2. I tried searching for the name of the artist, but I couldn't find anything, unfortunately. Anyway, the game is based on the classic novel A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And basically, it follows the story of a girl called Sarah, who is sent to a boarding school in a foreign land, and she relies on her love of books and fairy tales to help her make friends. Sounds quite nice. Apparently it's got six possible endings. So I'm just going to show off the first 20-ish minutes of gameplay. Let's hop right into it. It's, it's set in um, British-controlled India, I think. It was spring when Sarah's school life began. And spring in London was nothing like any spring she'd known before. Maybe that's where she came from, British-controlled India. Now she's in London, possibly. Nice music. The morning sun was not enough to lift the chill from the stony streets and the mist off the river blended with the smoke of countless chimneys to form a thick yellow fog. In such weather, the gas lamps burned night and day, flickering like stars to guide the horse-drawn ships to their destinations. But the ship that had carried her across the ocean was now a thing of the past. Here, then, was Sarah's new home. It was a big, dull brick house, exactly like all the others in its row, except that on the front door there shone a brass plate which was engraved in black letters, Miss Minchin's Select Seminary for Young Ladies. Nice. This must be your boarding school. Girls, gather round if you please. Come, come, hurry up. We have a new pupil who will be joining us starting today. I, I really like this, um... Like the, like the dialogue style, where it's got the text boxes over the, the character. It's pretty unique. Her name is Sarah Crewe. And she has only recently arrived in England, so you must all make her feel welcome. Oh god, I think there's quite a few girl characters, so, um... Rip voices, I guess. How do you do? The room filled with a chorus of gently murmured greetings. Oh god, maybe that's Sarah, it's probably Sarah. Sarah Crew, for that was her name, looked out upon a garden of strangers. Every face was turned to her, polite and attentive, and perfectly foreign. Yeah, she was raised in India, and now she's come to London, I guess. She felt more lost than she'd ever been at sea. Sarah, dear, as you can see, we have pupils here of all levels, but these three are particularly near your age. God, she has a really weird name, uh, voice. This is Miss Lavinia Herbert. Oh God, too many voices. Charmed. Miss... <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Miss Ermengird St. John. Ah. And Miss Jessie Abbott. We're very pleased to meet you. Great, thanks, Jessie. I am very pleased to meet you as well. I have never known very many girls near my age. Nor any other age. There's no girls in India. Sarah's life before that point had been not isolated, but sheltered. Her mother had died when she was born, leaving Sarah to be raised by the young, handsome father who was the only relation she'd ever known. Some fathers had little time for their children, but Sarah and her papa had always been quite close, reading books and playing games together every day. Holy shit. Nice just free time there, Dad. <laughs> he treated her as a little confidant, sharing his thoughts with her as if she were his peer and not a very young girl, and listened solemnly to the advice she gave in return, though he didn't always follow it. Sarah had never felt lonely, but it must be said that she had very little experience in making new friends. Well, I'm sure she'll make lots of friends in this game. I think it is another Yuri visual novel. That's what it said on the website. Sarah's father, Captain Crew, makes his home in India, and he is returning there as we speak. I shall expect you all to be very agreeable to her. Now, Sarah, take your seat. Your father has informed me how you very much you enjoy your studies, and I expect you to be a credit to this establishment. I am not certain how to become a credit, but I do wish to learn. This statement was met with muffled giggles. Confused, Sarah looked back at Miss Minchin for guidance. Take your seat, I said. But, but which seat is mine? Concerned that she would look disobedient if she hesitated further, 
she slid into the nearest empty place. No one objected, and she let out a sigh of relief. Nearby, two girls turned to whisper to each other. What a way she has of speaking, so old-fashioned. Hush. And her eyes are such a queer colour. A funny-looking child, to be sure. Well, she isn't pretty as other pretty people are, but there is something about her. Which makes you want to look at her again, to see what it is. And she has tremendously long eyelashes. Compared to these two, who don't seem to have any eyelashes at all. Only you would notice such a thing. Girls! Kindly pay attention to your lessons! Yes, Miss Minchin. Oh, nice transition. Whoa! Oof. Choose an activity for Sarah to perform each day. Every activity has three possible outcomes, which will change the icons you receive. At the end of the, at the, end of the week, Sarah's icons will be collected and turned into resources. Oof. Icons are only converted at the end of the week. Until then, they can be changed or lost by other activities. Plan the order of your activities in order to gain the best results for the week. So it is part visual novel and also part sort of like stat management kind of thing. So we've got knowledge, artistry, patience, sympathy, vigor, belief, and grace. Don't know what the difference between grace and belief is going to be, but okay. Select one activity for each day. Each activity has three possible outcomes. Okay, cool. So we can see our icons. Okay, fine. Whoa. Huh. So, okay, so... Each thing has three possible outcomes, so we could either get three knowledge, uh, one artistry and one knowledge, or just one knowledge. Wow. Okay, I am going to... Well, let's just kind of guess. Let's go tea party, read a book, um... Oh, dance seems okay. Double all vigor, nice. Maybe we should go for something else to gain vigor. A walk. Wow. Uh, we'll dance, and then read another book. Done. Easy. Now the schedule you have set will be carried out. For each weekday, Sarah will point to the randomly chosen result, and those icons will appear on the right side of the screen. You don't have to click to advance between days, so it'll happen automatically. You can adjust the speed of activities from the preference menu, cool. Icons are only converted to resources at the end of the week. A result of double all will double your current icons, but not your long-term knowledge resources. Okay, sure. Oh, nice. So we got, like, the best outcome there. Oh, not quite. Well, that sucked. Okay, that one went quite well. Okay, not bad, not bad. We've got a lot of sympathy, apparently. That was pretty neat, wasn't it? My room. My two rooms, just for me. Sarah was what no, was known as a parlour boarder. Where other girls were quartered in standard issue single rooms, she had a large bedroom uniquely decorated, and a separate sitting room with a comfortable sofa. Cool. Nice for some, eh? My papa has filled them with beautiful things. Books, velvet cushions, lace dresses, a porcelain tea set. Hats with great feathers that bob on them, even a tiger rug to remind me of India. And she's also got a little, like, rocking cot at the end of her bed. God, look at this room. It's very brown, but also quite nice. She's got elephants over there as well. It looks like a room that would belong to the daughter of a Raja, an Indian princess. I only wish that this room also contained my papa. Perhaps it does. He gave me all of these things, and whenever I touch them, I can imagine that he is with me. And when I read his farewell letter, I can hear his voice. My dear little missus, so here you are, in the place you always knew you must go. But be of good cheer. You will not have to stay for a very long time. There will be a lot of little girls, and you will play together, and I will send you plenty of books, and you will grow so fast it will seem scarcely a year before you are big enough and clever enough to come back and take care of your papa. I am not in the least anxious about your education. You are always sitting with your little nose burrowing to books, gobbling up as if you are a little wolf instead of a little girl. I have instructed Miss Minchin to drag you away from your books when you read too much, and make you go and ride your pony in a row, or buy a new doll. You ought to play more with dolls. Oh, Papa. If I bought a new doll every day, I should have too many to be able to make friends with them all. I am happiest with just Emily, and happier because I was with you when I met her. Emily, of course, was the name of a doll. A very special doll that Sarah discovered when her papa took her to visit the premier toy shops of London. She was a large doll, but not too large to carry about easily. She had naturally curling golden brown hair, which hung like a mantle about her. And her eyes were a deep, clear grey-blue, with soft, thick eyelashes which were real eyelashes, 
and not mere painted lines. At Sarah's insistence, she became a wardrobe every bit as grand as Sarah's own, with frocks and coats and nightgowns and beautiful lace-trimmed underthings. She even had her own tiny lady's handkerchief, and her own cradle bed at the foot of Sarah's. Ah, that's what it is, it's for a doll. Oh. Sarah lifted Emily up onto her lap and smiled at her, just as she would another little girl. My papa is on the sea now, Emily. We must be very great friends to each other, intimate friends, and tell each other things. Look at me, Emily. You have the nicest eyes I ever saw, but I wish you could speak. She brushed Emily's hair fondly, settling her in pride of place. There are so many girls in the school. I've never seen so many children in one place before. I'm afraid I should not even remember all of their names. I've forgotten everyone except for Jessie's, because that was, like, the most normal name. <laughs> I've always known that someday I would be required to go away, to leave my home and my papa, and come to England to be educated. I must do my duty, even if I do not like it. I dare say soldiers, even brave ones, don't really like going into battle, but they must do it anyway, and not cry and fuss. So must I. But oh, it is so lonely. She could not know, of course, how her quiet sorrow might be misinterpreted by others. Miss Minchin, the proprietor, had seen the lavish pre preparations for Sarah's pretty little room, and concluded that here was a child who had always been given her own way at the expense of others. Such a spoiled little girl might be expected to kick and scream and set the whole house into an uproar when abandoned by her only parent. That she did not suggested to Miss Minchin that Sarah cared nothing at all for her papa, but only for her dresses and toys. Wow, poor Sarah can't win. <laughs> Such was not a thought that inspired sympathy in her heart for the newcomer. Just then, there came a sound at the door of Sarah's room. Sarah was not a girl easily given to fear or startlement, but she had a healthy share of curiosity and went at once to see what it was. Oh. Um. <laughs> Outside sat a little girl, right on her bottom in the middle of the hall, her baby plump legs splayed and the lace of her petticoats askew, as if she had just toppled over. Which, in fact, she had. Hello there, who might you be? Mm, Lottie. Her words were hard to make out through the fingers she had shoved into her mouth. Lottie? The fingers were withdrawn and wiped dry among the frills of her skirt. Lottie lay. Sarah smiled. Here, then, was a chance to meet just one person at a time, instead of a crowd of strangers. Well then, I am Sarah Crew, and now we are properly introduced. She held out a hand and helped the little girl to her feet. Was there something you wanted? Can I, can I, might I, may I, look at your doll? Of course you may. Come and visit me in my room, and we can have tea together. My papa left me a beautiful tea set with lilies painted on it. Emily has her own service as well, sized for her hand, because she is too small to hold in one of my cups. I want to see. Come inside then, and I will introduce you to Emily. And that was Sarah's first week of classes at Miss Minchin's Select Seminary for Young Ladies. On the weekends, you can spend the resources you've collected in order to unlock scenes with different characters. Oh, cool. It's a very interesting way of doing a, doing a game. Requirements are there. Easy. Some scenes will not be available until later in the story. Okay. Okay, so it like costs it to do it. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, we can only do Jessie's. Hello, Sarah. May I come in to visit? Sarah rose to her feet at once. You are very welcome. Please come inside. I'm, I'm not bothering to voice any of the other ones. Jessie stepped into the room, then held out her skirt to drop a delicate curtsy in greeting. I know we've been introduced, but I wish to make your acquaintance more personally. And with that, Lavi and listening in. Lavinia, I thought that you and she were the best of friends. Of course we are. I adore her. She's so classic, so elegant and focused. I admire her very much. However, sometimes it's nicer to do things for oneself. Are those real silk stockings you're wearing? Sarah blinked, caught unawares by this change of topic. Yes, I have several pairs. My papa took me to many shops while he was in London. They're darling. Mine are only Lyle cotton. May I see the pattern? Sarah sat down in her comfortable armchair, lifting the hem of her skirt slightly, so that the floral embroidery over her ankle was visible. Showing off ankles. Scandalous. What little feet you have. I never saw such little feet. Are they small? She raised her leg a bit, pointing her toes and moving her foot this way and that. They seem the same size as they have always been. 
even though I, I know they must have been smaller than when I was younger. I am sure that Lottie's feet are smaller than mine, and Emily's, of course, are the smallest of all. Emily? Emily is the doll that my papa brought me to be my companion. Sarah stood up and lifted Emily into her arms for Jessie to admire. Emily, this is Jessie Abbott, my new friend. The older girl dropped a beautiful curtsy, then laughed. Oh, she has silk stockings too. Stockings for such teeny tiny feet, how cute. But you do have small feet for your height, Sarah. I'm sure you do. Look at mine. Jessie pressed her foot up alongside Sarah's for comparison. I just don't know whether smaller or larger feet are better. For dancing, I mean. If you dance with a partner, small feet would be better to avoid being stepped on. And they look very stylish in slippers. Slippers are cuter if they are smaller. But larger feet might be better for holding positions and standing on your toes. Small feet may not be as strong. Your feet have a good shape, though. They arch well. They're very pretty. Can feet be pretty? Colonel Grunge's little daughter, Isabella in India, was the prettiest girl I ever knew. All the gentlemen said she was the beauty of the regiment. She has dimples and round rose colored cheeks, pale blue eyes, and long curly hair the color of gold. And everyone said those things were very pretty. No one ever spoke of her feet. I suppose if feet can be pretty, then perhaps I do have pretty feet. I know the rest of me is not. My hair is too black and straight and short. I am too thin and my eyes are a strange color. You don't have the same kind of beauty that dolls are made of. That doesn't mean that you aren't pretty. I think you're quite interesting to look at. Sarah did not wish to contradict to her new friend, but had no reason to lie. But her inner conviction that she was an ugly little girl could not be so easily dispelled. Oh. Will you show me the rest of your dolls and clothes? Do all of your petticoats have so many lace frills? Do you, do you think any of them would fit me? I don't know. I suppose we can find out. New week. Nice. Oof. So I'm pretty sure like almost all the the dialogue is is mostly just lifted from the the book a little princess i think it's been slightly altered a bit but they do say on the website that um the writing is mostly just taken from the book anyway i'm going to leave the video there for now it's it's very it's very cool it's it's a very sweet little story i think it's going to be mostly that for for the whole game anyway that was a quick look at a little lily princess thank you guys very much for watching Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Holy shit. What? Are we gonna do it? Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> <laughs>